Hello, wonderful bridge people. Eli Jolly here, and today I'm presenting a lesson about upside down count attitude. Very excited to be teaching you this. This is my favorite signaling method. Um, I feel like it's a slight step up from standard count attitude. Um, it's technically a little bit better because you're going to be wasting fewer of your higher spots. So let's jump in here. Let's learn the technique. Let's look at some hands and how some great players applied it. Now, one quick caveat is whenever you learn a signaling method, it makes your game better. But don't forget to do all your preliminary work, right? Count tricks, count points, you know, take your, listen to your partner's cards, see their spots and everything, but don't forget to do your rudimentary work as well. Okay, let's jump in here. So upside down count attitude. So if you wish to encourage in a suit, you play low, okay? Which implies that you're gonna play low high. So occasionally you'll have a, a holding where you don't have the correct spots, right? You might have eight, 10, and you need to encourage. So you play the eight and then you play the 10. Now, this isn't a vacuum, these rules are, but hopefully your partner, because of the context of the hand, because of the dummy spots, because of their spots, can figure out that if you play the eight, it might be low in that situation. So if you wish to encourage, you play low, high. If you wish to discourage, you play high, low. So say you had a holding like eight, three, two, you would play the eight and then follow with a low card, right? So if you started with an odd number in the suit, so this is when you're giving count, right? You wanna know, you let your partner know how many you started with in the suit. So if you have an odd number, you could have been three, it could have been five, you know, if it's a singleton, that's one, you know, there's nothing you can do about the spot you get, but hopefully uh, the bridge gods are with you. Um, so if, yeah, if you started with an odd number, you play a high card and then you play a low card. If you start with an even number, you play low and then you play high, okay? So let's talk about when you give attitude and when you give count. So you give attitude, right? How you feel about the suit. Do you want this suit continued, right? Is when partner leads. So if partner leads a sequence, if partner leads a high card, typically at trick one, we're gonna be giving attitude about that suit, right? That's sort of what most American pairs do, and I think that's relatively standard. So the example here is that partner leads the ace, which usually promises the ace king at trick one, and you have jack seven four. So it's a bit of a vacuum, but in general, you should play the seven, which is discouraging. Now the jack might have some value, you know, it's all based on context, so don't waste that card, but play the seven, which looks relatively high to discourage. And then when your partner follows with the king, you can play the four. We'll actually be looking at an example pretty similar to this when, when we get into our hands. So say you have 10-2. You're going to play the two, which is just encouraging here. So you're going to play the two, which partner can read right away. Oh, that's the lowest spot. And then you can follow with the 10. And so your partner will know that you want that suit continued, hopefully to get a trump. Let's say you have the nine, eight, three. You're going to play the nine, which is discouraging. Uh, you know, you could play the eight, I suppose, depending on style, but you know, might as well play the nine. It's very clear that that's a high spot. So your partner will get the message loud and clear. Okay. You know, and your partner might be thinking, ooh, where's the eight? Where's the nine? So if you play that nine, your partner won't think, ooh, he might have eight, nine, or she might have eight, nine. So say that you have queen, jack, three, two. You know, depending on context, but generally you're going to be encouraging in this suit because your partner can continue even if Clara roughs. It's not as if you're going to be giving anything away in that suit. So you'll play the two here. Um, if there is a reason for you, you know, to try to get on lead very quickly. You could possibly play the queen to play your partner. You know, we have all the high cards, so, you know, play the jack over, play a small one over to my jack. But typically, if you just want to encourage in that suit, you could just play the two. Excellent. So that's giving attitude when partner leads. Now, when declarer leads a suit, you're going to give count. Okay. So partner, attitude, declarer, count. So declarer leads a side suit not trumps, right? So we're not giving count in the trump suit. We don't want to help declare or figure out who has what in the trump suit. Uh, and you have no ability to win the trick or you know decide to duck it. Say you have the 10, 6, 5, 4. That's an even number. You're going to play the 4, 
right? So you're gonna play low high. The four is a pretty clear spot. Let's say you have 10, eight, three. Go ahead and play the eight. Don't waste the 10. The 10 might have value on the third round. I remember playing in a national tournament and my partner did this to me and yeah, it was a, it was a, it was a, it was a time. Um, but you know, a good lesson, right? Those, those things will stick with you. So let's say you have like nine, eight, six, four, three, two, you have six of them. You can play the two. Now you're probably thinking, well, how's partner going to know if I have four? How's partner going to know if I have six, if I have two, it's all based on context. That's why you got to keep using your bridge brain and not just sort of be a slave to the spots. But if you can start keying in on these little spots, your game will go way up. So let's say you have jack two, go ahead and play the two. And then when you follow with the jack, it'll be pretty clear that you uh, have a doubleton in the suit and hey partner, maybe you can get a trump. Uh, maybe um, they'll know to switch to something else because of you know dummies uh, declares the long suit, et cetera, et cetera. So really important here that you give your partner count and that you're consistent with it. And if you're not watching your partner's count and you're getting your partner's giving count, you're just giving declare information. So make sure to be on the ball and ready to watch. So quick review here is that you give attitude when partner leads, you give count when declare leads. Excellent. So let's apply this technique and let's look at uh, a few hands here. So we're going to be looking at the north-south hands. I, I know that all four hands are exposed, but this isn't about bidding. This is about carding and signaling. So I was watching a world-class pair play, Chris, Chris Willinkin and um, Jan Jansma, a great world-class pair, and they play upside down count attitude. And I noticed a few of these hands and I thought, wow, these are perfect examples. So I wanted to illustrate a couple of them for you. So on this hand, uh, West open a club, pass. So I'm just gonna give you the auctions kind of quickly, just give you a sense of, of what's happening here. Um, West bids one no trump, showing their sort of weak no trump type hand. And then uh, East bids three no trump, pass, pass, pass. Okay, so West has a tough lead. They sort of hemmed and hauled, and then they decide to lead a spade. So I'll give you a second here to just sort of get your bearings. We're going to be thinking about the hand from north and from south's perspective, and specifically with carding. So on this trick, east plays small, and it seems like, well, maybe partner led from king 10, so uh, south sticks in the nine, and um, unfortunately, west wins. 10. So at this point in the hand, we have our first instance of upside down count attitude. West leads a diamond and now North can give count. So they, they play the lowest spot they have. South can see the two, the three and the four. So that's clearly North's smallest spot. And West is starting the suit. So it seems like North has an even number and that they probably have two if West is starting the suit. So uh, West is disguising the holding by playing the Queen of Diamonds. And then here again, South is going to give count. Now on this trick, they go after clubs and you know South makes a forced play, West plays. And now North is going to duck, but it's really cool because they have four cards in the suit. They can give count as well. So they might as well just play the two here. So they did a good job of ducking the trick. And now, you know, East was wants to continue with their plan of playing diamonds. And, you know, it seems like here, you know, that the Jack 10 has some value. So they're going to go ahead and uh, just play small, which might have some suit preference overtones, but we won't get too deep into that. And now at this point, um, West gets bad news because South is going to show out. Now let's think about what South is going to play. This is their first discard. Now playing upside down count attitude, when you discard a small card, you're encouraging. When you discard a high card, you're discouraging. So in this instance, it doesn't look like South, you know, wants, you know, it looks like continuing spades is just going to help declare. So, you know, and declares started playing on clubs, they started playing on diamonds. So it seems as if North has a heart high card. So whatever holding North has in hearts, they South wants 
hearts to be continued at some point. They want them to be played. So South is going to encourage in hearts with the two of hearts. And now West gets the bad news and uh, North takes the 10. And now at this point, they do a great job of switching to uh, what South said. So, you know, they're going to play the three here. And uh, at this point in the hand, West is pretty much done, but you know, they they go ahead and uh, they cash their diamond, trying to see if diamonds will split 3-3. Three, three. They don't, and then they, they make, you know, sort of a last effort here and they play. They go ahead and play spades. And then um, on the actual hand, uh, North did a great job of playing the queen of hearts and that unblocked the suit. And then at this point in the hand, our our friend or us, <laughs> South, has four tricks. So at this point in the hand, East West win zero tricks and go down two. So a couple of cool instances of giving upside down count attitude. North South Galf gave count and the diamond suit. Uh, we saw the heart discard from South and um, there's just very clean and clear defense. So let's go to our next example. So we have a pretty basic auction here. West opens one no trump. Uh, East decides to transfer. West super accepts with their hand. Yeah, I think they probably play some minimum super accepting type uh, convention here. They bid three spades. And then interestingly, East passes with their hand. So at this point, uh, this is kind of like our examples we looked at earlier in terms of attitude. So partners leading. So South is going to give their attitude, how they feel about the suit. So, you know, when partner leads the ace here, they're probably promising ace king and they can see the dummy. So South here does not want to encourage clubs and get them to keep playing clubs and then, you know, not be able to trump. So, you know, if South here had Jack six or Jack eight, they could play the eight and then the Jack and then North would know that they started with a double 10, but here they're going to discourage. So interestingly, the queen of clubs is in the dummy. So, you know, the, the Jack has no value on this hand. So South has an option as to how they're going to discourage. They can either discourage by playing the eight six, or they can discourage by playing the jack six. Now, what's the difference? So if you think about suit preference here, so we can give sort of two signals in one. We can discourage, and then on the next card, our partner can think, okay, well, they discourage by playing the eight six instead of the jack six. So if you discourage, so let's look at here. So if, say we, play small and we play the eight here. And then our partner plays the king. Our partner will think, okay, well they discouraged and the jack is pretty clearly what they have. So why didn't they play jack six? They played eight six. So if you play eight six, that's smaller than playing, that's lower, excuse me, than playing the jack six. So it's probably the case that South has diamonds, which is what South does on the hand. But say that South had the ace queen of hearts and desperately wanted a heart through. They could discourage by playing the jack and then the six saying, partner, play cash your ace king of clubs, fine. You know, it looks as if that's good. That's going to cash, obviously, because West open one, no trump. And then when they play a heart through, they, they can pick up two more tricks and the hand is over. But here, there's no rush, right? There's no real rush to play hearts through in this instance. So on the actual hand, um, South did what we did and played the 8-6. And then the hand is pretty much over at this point. North is going to win a spade trick and East-West are going to make an over trick on this hand. Excellent. So let's check out our third example. So on this hand, uh, East West had what's called an XYZ auction. If you don't know the conventions, it's not that important. Um, essentially, they um, what happened here is that both of them showed their suits naturally, 
and then West bid two clubs, which forced uh, East to bid diamonds, and then West passed. So uh, West's intention was to sign off in two diamonds, and that's what they did. Well, we're looking from South perspective, and we're really happy, right? We have very good diamonds. We have, it looks like our clubs are well-placed. So it looks like we probably have five tricks in our hand. So make the natural queen of hearts lead. And you can see the dummy and North has a decision here, right? Partner led a sequence. So we're going to give attitude about the suit. Now, it, you know, whenever the dummy hits with the king, you know, king fifth and, uh, you know, our partner doesn't have the ace, you know, you don't have the ace. It's not as if you want to your partner to keep playing the suit, you know, because they might set up the suit. But you can also give your partner a sense of what you're holding is, you know, what, how dire the situation is. So if, if you know, the situation were that uh, North had, you know, three cards in the suit and was very worried about hearts being set up, they could really discourage here. But you can just encourage in hearts at this point. Uh, and it also looks like the 10-9 of hearts have value. So you don't want to waste these spots because we can visualize, you know, wasting the 10 or the 9 and then them being able to, you know, do a roughing finesse through north, you know, setting up the 8 or 7 or 6. So you just, you don't want to be wasting spots in this situation. Once east wins the ace, partner will know that hearts are kind of off limits anyway. It's playing, playing a heart isn't going to be, you know, our first tack. So, East decides on this hand to just go ahead and draw some trumps. So they play the, the ace, and then they play a trump, and South is very happy to, you know, win, win the trump here. Um, interestingly, you know, they have the top three trumps, so South could win the king, they could win the queen, or the ten, you know, and now they won the ten, which you know, when they cash their diamonds has some suit preference implications. We're not gonna get too deep into that, but basically kind of hints that maybe they have something in the club suit because they're winning their lowest diamonds first. So that's just a little subtle thing here. Now, North, let's get back to upside down count attitude. North does not want to pitch a heart because they need those hearts. Uh, North does not want to play a high spade because they actually do want spades through, but and they don't want clubs through. So they don't they don't want to encourage here with the six of clubs. So what North can do is play the jack. So this is something slightly outside of upside down count attitude, but very important. If you play a high card here, if you play an honor in this situation, what you're saying is partner, I have a sequence. So say they had queen, jack, 10, they would play the queen here, which would show queen, jack, 10, but they have jack, 10, nine. So they go ahead and play the jack of clubs saying, partner, I have no honor higher, but I have a sequence here, um, which also, you know, at this point in the hand has some suit preference overtones for spades. You know, they don't obviously don't have diamonds. They, 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 they don't want hearts through, uh, and you know, you don't want clubs. So what are they gonna play? Spades, right? So at this point in the hand, South goes ahead and um, caches a diamond. They play another diamond. North pitches the club because they can. And at this point, the defense does a great job of just going ahead and playing spades, they win their spade, and they switch to a club. And at this point in the hand, South has two club tricks, and East-West go down two. It goes down one, excuse me. So hopefully this is a good primer for upside down count attitude. You know, just the, the, the key principles again are whenever partner leads a suit, a high card in a suit sequence, you're gonna give attitude whenever declare leads and you're usually gonna play second hand low, you know, you're not winning the trick, you're gonna give count. Now, I incorporated a little bit of suit preference in here. This is something for you you and your partner to talk about how deep you wanna get in terms of your discussion of how to use suit preference within upside down count attitude. But in general, you can get by with giving attitude and count. And now if your partner has already made it clear 
that they've they've given you their attitude or their count in the suit, then those next cards can maybe have more of a suit preference tinge. Now, as always, listen to the auction, give an idea of how many points your partner has, think about declares tricks, think about your tricks, right? That's that's the bread and butter, but you know, if you're stuck, you can you can you can rely on your partner's responsible carding and uh, just elevate your game. So thank you so much for watching. This has been awesome to make this video for you and happy bridge. Bye-bye.